Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about SSRF bug bounty reports and some advanced SSRF techniques to bypass whitelist filters. One report that I find very interesting that I have reported in bug bounties for SSRF was Apache Batik SSRF and uh, the steps to reproduce was very simple. Uh, simply navigate to the target, click on the top right button and export as image. Intercept the request and in SVG parameter at the payload provided below. So there was a particular parameter going through the SVG request and which contains this particular SS SVG data. So this payload uh, was created to exploit the SVG rasterization. So SVG rasterization is a process of converting SVG into a different data form, right? Into a raster form. So yeah, uh, through the response error, I came to know that Apache Batik library was used, right? And then I googled more about Apache Batik and how Apache Batik works. After finding out a little bit about Apache Batic, I was able to find a CVE that was pretty new at that time. After this report, I reported one more SSRF vulnerability that was through HTML injection inside the PDF generator. So on the attacker server, we were required to create a payload.psp file for this one. This particular report was also very interesting because here we exploited a PDF generator and uh, we got the SSRF through HTML injection. So the reports to reproduce this were pretty simple as well. Simply go to the target, the export PDF button, intercept the request in worksheet and then replace the request body. The payload to look here for was very interesting. So as you can see, Initially, the request only contained this particular HTML parameter with the value test and you can add any value here and uh, this was properly sanitized. So even if I try to inject uh, HTML here, for example, iframe or any other thing, it was getting successfully sanitized and uh, I wasn't able to exploit this. So instead, what I did was I opened the PDF file and I checked the metadata of the PDF file. Inside the metadata, I came to know that WKHTML2 PDF was being used to generate this particular PDF. So I studied more about WKHTML2 PDF. Then I came across different kind of flags that can be used while using a WKHTML2 PDF library. And one flag was run script and the other one was JavaScript delay. So I used both of these flags and with run script, uh, I ran javascript document.write to write my iframe inside the PDF. And in the PDF, like inside the uh, payload, I used the attacker server with my PHP file in it. And inside the PHP file, I basically sent a redirection header that is like location header to redirect the request to the AWS metadata IP and I managed to steal AWS credential formats. This report was also very interesting because the amount it took to bypass the security measures was pretty awesome. And I managed to bypass it by using a payload.psp and some pretty good tricks uh, I found out through wkhtml to pdf So in this example, we're gonna bypass a whitelist based input filter to exploit an SSR rep. I know I told you guys that for mitigation of SSRF, whitelisting is always better, but that doesn't mean that insecure implementation cannot make it vulnerable, right? So here, as you can see, there's a whitelist based input filter and we will exploit this particular SSRF. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'll just click on access the labs. Uh, so this is the particular lab here and uh, we need to exploit SSRF. Um, so let's see 
first we need to find where the SSR can be. There's a check stock button in the products and if I click this, it tells me there are 29 units left uh, of that particular product. In the request, you can analyze that this stock API parameter is going through and it's responding with a particular number. We'll take this request into the repeater tab and so yeah, it's pretty clear that this particular request have an SSRA that we need to exploit. But uh, can we exploit this as EBB? No. So it's checking the host that this string shall be there. First, what I'll do is I'll just URL decode this. So what I usually do to exploit the these kind of SSR if while I'm testing is because there's a whitelist going on uh, I'll just try to search for that for example let's say I'll just search SSRF whitelist by fast and try to get some payloads right and uh, SSRF by pass uh, so If I can find good list of payloads, I can probably run it through Intruder. So, but we need to find any whitelisting based by us, right? So, these are the particular domain parsers, and uh, this. These, this particular list of domain confusion looks interesting and uh, so I'll just copy these particular strings there as a payload to run through Intruder and let's see I'll just and then I'll cut it now I will use set command to replace the domain that is this and uh, I'll replace it with the whitelisted URL that we need to provide Also replace the attacker domain. Just in case we get lucky and we get a hit, and then I'll just grab the host. So I've copied the payloads and now I will use intruder. Inside the intruder, I'll just add the markers here and then I'll just paste the particular payload. Yeah. So after pasting the payload, I'll just change the URL encoding because we don't want to URL encode our payload uh, encode as it is and I'll just run it. Mm -hmm. And so after using these particular payloads in Intruder, we are seeing uh, 400 errors mainly. And uh, yeah, there are some good errors to give us some information that what's happening on the back end, what kind of technology is being used. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we have a very interesting error that is a 500. And what was the payload here? Okay. So this particular 500 suggests that something went wrong and it actually tried to connect somewhere but uh, couldn't. Right. So let's just say take 
this and do the repeater tab. And let's see what's happening here. So as you can see, we are we are using at the rate here, and I will use this particular payload. And apart from that, what we can do is I'll try to smuggle some characters here that will force the web application to load this page instead of at the rate. Um, so let's see what we can do here because initially if we visit this url this page we visit this particular url in the browser we get redirected to we like to shop dot net domain right so we need to stop this particular thing and uh, you can do that by several characters like hash question mark slash but as soon as we add these characters uh, we are getting this particular error message now interesting thing to do here can be using url info to smuggle these particular characters um so if i don't use any kind of characters like if i don't use a slash i'm getting here right and if i use a slash here that will suggest this particular domain and this particular target to pick uh, so if I use this I'm getting external stock check must host must be this so host gets things here right so we need to bypass or obfuscate this particular character slash right so let's see uh, the basic thing would be to try URL encoding because as you can see in the history it's getting URL encoded right so let's try that let's try encoding the slash right so, so slash is URL encoding here now if I use this particular thing let's see what happens it's still giving me the same error right now let's try double URL encoding. Let's try bypassing this particular scheme to double URL encoding. So how do we double URL encode something? So we first encode the slash and then we get first into F and then we encode it again. Only thing is we will encode only the special character that is percent here. So we will and then I'll select the percent and then I'll URL encode this. So percent in URL encoding is percent 25 and 2F remains the same. So on the server side, this character gets sent and then it becomes this particular character that is percent 2F. So this is what URL encoding is. And try and see if we are able to get a hit on our collaborator by doing this. So rather than a percent 2F, I'll send percent 25 2F. Percent 2 25 will be decoded as person and then do it. So as you can see we have gotten the collaborator response here. I'm pretty sure that my collaborator also got a hit. And uh, now we need to delete something mm, on the local host, right? In order to solve this particular lab that is I don't know which one was it. One. yeah so in order to solve the lab we need to delete some particular user um, like to solve the lab change the stock url to local host admin delete user part so, okay. so we need to delete carlos user in order to solve this so as we have verified that we are able to bypass this particular whitelist thing by using a collaborator url and you are encoding it double you are encoding the payload so we'll just open local host here let's see if we can get something from the local host um, as you can see if we try to access local host on 480 we are greeted with the website and we also see this for the admin panel right Nice. So after I add 
uh, version 2.5 version this and then if we add slash admin here now this is getting url decoded let's just see if the url decode this what's the url there hmm. so it's saying local host then it's saying slash admin and we have successfully bypassed the url here and uh, then I think we will be able to add uh, a particular watch the URL. Um, to delete this, we just need to send this particular request. Uh, let's see if we are able to do that. Let's see if we are able to do that, right? And we need to call us. So, I think I saw the map, but I'm not quite sure. Mm. This was the lab URL, and yeah, we saw this particular lab. Cool. So, in this particular video, we learned how to approach SSRF. We viewed some of the bug bounty reports that I created, and uh, apart from that, we also learned the importance of active deep one while doing bug hunting if you like the video please subscribe to my channel like and comment thank you